I'm writing a book called How Money Really Works. We put our money in a bank, and they were only paying us like 1%. Mm -hmm. So you can do four things with money. You can spend it, lend it, own with it, or give it away. Mm -hmm. So when money is at a bank, credit union, or an insurance company, it's in a lended position. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Why are they borrowing our money and paying us interest? Are they just a benevolent institution? <laughs> no. Yeah, what are they doing with our money? They're borrowing our money a million bucks and paying us 10 grand. Now, in 2008, they disclosed right off the bat, they're taking 30 to 40% of their tier one assets and they're turning around with that money and guess where they're putting it? Right where I just told you. Right. In the insurance company. Because the insurance companies are usually rated AAA, mm. the ones I put my money in. A lot of banks are only, only rated triple B. So they borrow our money at 1%, put it into uh, an institution ranked six notches higher in safety, and they're earning 5%. How much more is five than one? Four. No, it's 500%. How so? Would you hire an employee for 10000 that made you an extra 50000 Sure. That's called a 500% return on employment cost if you're a business owner. Mm -hmm. Would you buy a widget machine for 10 grand if that widget machine made you an extra 50 grand? Of course. It's 500%, not 4%. Wow. <laughs> Does it, you get it? Yes. And they're doing it on OPM, other people's money. All I tell my clients is you can bypass the middleman. You can take your money, increase the liquidity and the safety and the rate of return, and you could be earning 10 tax free. So this is then the real business of the banks is what you're saying. You have not making money on mortgages and some loans or whatever things they might do, which is a part of their, but really their biggest business is what you're describing. Patrick, the banks could do far better if they did not loan one dime to the public, but they can't get away with doing that or people would stop bringing money to deposit it into the bank. But the bank can more predictably and safely borrow our money and put it into these types of instruments but it's also the velocity of money. Mm -hmm. So I often ask my audiences, why in the world would a bank or credit union who can borrow our money at 1% and they can turn around and earn five times that ta tax free mm -hmm. ever want to loan you or me a million dollars to go buy a home or something like that? And people go, well, be because they have to? No, there's no regulation that says they have to. I mean, if we didn't give them the money, maybe they, we, we would stop doing that, right. but that's not the reason. So if I go to a bank and I borrow a million dollars to go build a house, what am I going to do with the million? I'm going to give it to the general contractor. Right. What's the general contractor going to do? Take his piece, pay his subs mm -hmm. and the suppliers. Mm -hmm. What are all of them now going to do? Loan that million dollars back to the bank again. It goes right back into the banks. The banks get it back in a week or so at 1% or less if it's a checking account. They get it back again and they loan it back out again at five, at 500%. Mm -hmm. The average bank will loan out and receive back, okay? They'll do that 17 times. They'll turn over the same money 17 times a year, only 12 times a year in a recession. Shucky darn. So see, they can afford to take risks that if I uh, lose my job and they have to foreclose, they don't want to foreclose on my house, but they, they've calculated that in there. But if they can borrow OPM, other people's money, at 1% and loan it back out again at 5%, five times, 17 times a year on the same money, that's called the velocity of money. Wow. So this, is, this really starts to sound like a racket. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the banking industry, but it's not new. This is the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 in the, in the New Testament. This has been around for millennia. Wow. So, you know, you illustrated so well as far as, you know, the, um, the uh, analogies that you, that you weave into it so that it's something tangible to us lay people, you know, that go out and work every day and, uh, and not see this, you know, this, this sort of uh, look behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's so when you start to look at okay, so we got banks, you know, we got the government, you know, and we see, you know, how literally, I don't know that I'm going to say it's totally malevolent, but it seems like it's rigged against producers, right? Uh, you know that that the the system is, you know, that these people are locked in and they enslave the producers. Uh, in the ways that they, with inflation, with taxes, et cetera, with the relending of your of your money, uh, you know, because if I buy, like you said, 
if I borrow the money and I go build the house and something happens to me, I'm at risk. Then next thing you know, maybe I'm bankrupted in the house. But they don't care because that money is trickled back to them over and over again. Oh, 17 yeah. times. Yeah. So where could I get into that business? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, in a lot of my books, I talk about how to become your own banker. Right. Okay. I'll give you a little taste. Mm -hmm. For example, in my max funded insurance contracts, let me use an example of an actual friend, a client of mine who is a real estate developer. Okay. What he does is he buys uh, strip malls, uh, large apartment complexes mm -hmm. that uh, people want out of. He will fix them up and then flip them to somebody. He doesn't like to keep them and be a landlord. Right. So he has a pool of investors looking for fixed up properties mm -hmm. and he goes out and finds the distressed properties. So where he keeps his working capital is where I do in my insurance contracts because mm -hmm. it's very liquid. You can access your money with an elect electronic funds transfer or phone call. Okay. So many times he might call and he'll say, Doug, I need a million bucks out of my insurance contract to uh, tie up an earnest money agreement on a $30 million project I want to buy. I go, great. Uh, how soon do you need it? And if it's a week or so, uh, we can just do it normal. But he mm -hmm. says, I need it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. In the insurance contract, he can get that electronically. We can overnight it or whatever. Now, he says, send me the form. <clears throat> it's one page. He puts his name. He puts his account number or policy number at the mm -hmm. top. He's going to uh, sign it on the bottom. He doesn't have to have his signature notarized mm -hmm. unless it's going to a different bank account or address than on record. Mm -hmm. And the one sentence, the one question that he must answer is, do you want to withdraw a million out of your insurance con contract or would you like to borrow a million? Mm. Guess which box he checks. Borrow. That's right. Yeah. Here's why. If he withdrew the million... The million that is, and he's been averaging about 10% like me. So if he withdrew it to do this and he didn't pay it back for a year, he would relinquish $100,000 of interest, 10 grand on that million. Right. He doesn't have to do that. So he, ke he keeps the full principal balance for, uh, for his rate of return and yet still has access to capital to be able to do his... Yeah, in other words, project. let's say you went to a bank to borrow money and they said, well, uh, you have a savings, a CD here. You can use that as collateral and we'll loan you the money. But right. see, the banks will loan you at five and they'll only pay you one. Right. No, this is different. With the insurance contract, the insurance company says, oh, heavens, yeah. Uh, we'll loan you the equivalent of your cash value in here. because, And so you'll just leave it here and we'll keep crediting you with this indexed return. Mm. And we'll loan you a million. Mm. They guarantee to never charge you more than 5% with this particular company that he has. And he's okay. making 10% on it. How much more is 10 than five? Well, five times, well, 500% more. No, no, that's 100% more. more. Yeah. Oh, that's right, okay, so you're doubling it, yeah, 5% so more. But he's uh, pulling yeah. it out. The, he doesn't have to write out a check to pay the interest. The insurance company charges 50 grand at the end of the year, and they credited him 100. He made a net of 50 grand, he made a net of 5% tax-free on his money while he was using it on top of what he was doing. So is this the best kept secret in the financial world? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, is, well, that, see, is that what see, it what you, you, were, you were asking, how can the little guy do it? Right. Last year, he borrowed at 5% mm -hmm. and earned 25% on the money that he borrowed because he didn't actually withdraw it. So he was earning 25, it only cost him five. So he netted 20% tax-free on his money while he was buying real estate. So this is, so it's literal when you say be, be your own bank. You get, exactly. to be, you get to be in the business yourself of banking your own money rather than using these banks, which are just, you know, <laughs> oh, uh, pillaging. You do this to buy cars yeah. or anything or yeah. businesses. This is where I have my working capital for my business. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, a lot of people don't know what they don't know, and this is why I write the books, and sometimes it goes over people's heads, mm -hmm. and even financial advisors don't get it. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they came to me, it was through the financial dimension is what I call it. Mm -hmm. But Patrick, it's not just about the money. Mm -hmm. So when I would sit down with people and I would uh, tell them what I did, okay, I help people optimize assets. Mm -hmm. But when we say the word assets, what kinds of things do most people think of first? Money. Yeah. yeah, real estate, stocks, bonds, real estate, mutual funds. and Those are just things. Mm -hmm. Those are just material possessions. So mm -hmm. they're the financial assets. But then I would ask them, what are the most important assets mm -hmm. that you value, that you cherish, that you possess on this earth? Family. Family. Mm -hmm. Health. Mm -hmm. 
uh, values. Uh, these assets involve people. The, these are human assets. They are our core assets. And so I put the, these under the foundational assets for abundant living. It would include your talents, unique abilities, charitable foundations, uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. There's a third dimension of authentic wealth is what I call it. It's our intellectual assets. Wisdom is a product of knowledge times experiences, right. and not just the good ones. I've actually learned more from my bad experiences in life. It would include your formal education, reputation, systems, methods, traditions, alliances, ideas, and skills. Mm -hmm. So these are the three dimensions of authentic wealth.